In today's video, we're gonna be installing the Apex front truss kit from Artec Off-Road on our Jeep Gladiator. The main reason you would want to install a truss on your Gladiator, JL, or JK is two things. Uh, especially on the JKs, the front axle is super weak, but on the JLs and the Gladiators, they have this section right here called the front axle disconnect. And this is known to be a weak link to break, especially when you do any sort of hardcore uh, off-roading. So what Artec has designed is this truss kit that ties the center section with the front axle disconnect and it ties in all the way back to uh, the spring perch over here. So from here all the way over, it gives it support. Welcome to TJ Mitchell Films, your one-stop shop for everything Jeep and off-road related content. And today, as you can see, we got the front end of the Gladiator a little bit disassembled. We're gonna be installing this front truss from Artec Off-Road. Let me catch you guys up with a little bit of the prep work I did before I started. The so to get ready for this video, uh, obviously I did a couple things to get us ready for the install. First up, obviously, I jacked the Gladiator up, took off the wheels and tires. I got the axle sitting on jack stands, and then I have this jack lifting up the front end uh, just a little bit more so that way I have just a little bit more room to work uh, under there. So I could get room in here to be able to uh, weld. I had to take off track bar brace uh, from Synergy. This is on the passenger side. You'll also see that I had to take off the uh, brake line uh, bracket right here so that way I can get underneath the spring perch to, to weld in there. Also uh, pulled the shock off as well because it made it a little hard to get in there as well. So this guy right here is the front axle disconnect that bolts in right here. And to remove that, you gotta pop off this white pin right here and pull the connector out. Then you can tuck that wiring harness uh, up and out of the way. On the skid plate that holds this on, there's, uh, you can see they mount right here. There's four 10 millimeter bolts. Pull that off to get the skid plate. And then this is held on with some 13 mil bolts. And all this thing does is it has this little fork right here, this fork slides this collar over like that. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive. And that's all it does. So uh, to protect the electronics in here, um, obviously we removed this because we're gonna do a little bit of welding up here. Oh yeah, and I uh, obviously to get this up, I just removed the uh, sway bar link here as well. But that's everything we did to the passenger side to get ready for this. Let's jump over to the driver's side. So a little bit less to do on the driver's side. We pulled off the shock, uh, same exact thing, and the brake line bracket here. On this side, we have another clip for the electronic front locker. And so all you have to do is pop that out and then you can slide uh, the truss over right here. Also, this is another area we're gonna have to be very careful uh, when welding, because we don't wanna get too hot. We're gonna weld everything in short, small stitches. And that's all we had to do to get the driver's side ready. I did have to modify this piece of the truss that fits underneath the driver's side spring perch, and that is because with this bracket for the sway bar end links from Synergy, you can see there's a bolt up in there and we just notched it to fit. So when we push this guy in there. So in order to get a good weld on this, obviously we're gonna need to grind off this paint. And the easiest way that I like to do is I'm gonna come in here with a Sharpie and I'm gonna just mark where I need to take paint off on all these pieces. All right, and as you guys can see, we got our marks of everywhere that we're gonna grind. Mark everything on the driver's side as well. So I went ahead and taped off all the pieces of the truss here, and we're gonna shoot just the insides with some paint, hopefully to help prevent a little bit of rust, uh, because it's gonna be pretty hard to paint the insides uh, once it's welded onto the vehicle. So hopefully a little bit of rust prevention. I'll just shoot the insides real quick, and then while that's drying, 
We'll go back inside and start prepping the axle housing. All right guys, so I'm gonna be using two main tools to uh, clean up the axle tube here. First off is a little pneumatic grinder with just a little sanding wheel on it. Uh, get as much as I can with that. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna use this little pneumatic guy with a wire wheel. So hopefully I can get uh, up into the tighter places with this. And my goal here is to, this is like pretty much where the weld's gonna be, but I'm gonna wanna take the paint down kind of in a large area so that way the paint doesn't catch on fire and contaminate my welds. So this part might be a little time consuming, but having having your base metal prepped and clean is, is gonna be a really important, uh, important step for us. Our truss pieces are done drying, as you can see. Tried to get the paint just on the spots where we're not gonna weld uh, as to not contaminate the weld. So I think that's gonna do a pretty good job of preventing rust on the inside. Let's put all the pieces in and get to welding. All right, so now that we have everything prepped and ready, let's talk about the actual welding that we're gonna do. And there's a couple uh, key points that I need to touch on if you guys are gonna be tackling this yourselves. If you're not comfortable doing a welding project like this, Take it to a shop who knows what they're doing because there is a, a little bit to know. Um, first up is that the actual axle tubes are mild steel and the uh, center cast section uh, is cast steel, not cast iron. I did a lot of research on this. Welding cast iron is different than welding cast steel. They are somewhat similar, but you don't have to preheat this like you would with cast iron. Cast iron, you'd want to preheat this to like 400 degrees and weld it. So when we weld this, uh, the mild steel to the cast section, we're gonna just weld it with a normal MIG welder as we would, but then we're gonna wrap it in a welding blanket to uh, help it cool a little slower. The other key thing is you're, we're gonna wanna jump around. So it, we're gonna wanna weld a, weld a bit over here and then jump to the other side. So that way we're not doing too much welding and uh, warping and bending the axle housing, which is the opposite of what we're trying to achieve here. So, but to start off, I'm gonna throw a bunch of tacks all over this thing. So that way everything is exactly where we want it. And then I'm gonna jump all over this thing and weld it all up. Also to make sure that we get a good ground, I'm gonna go ahead and start by tacking this piece up on the top of the main truss because there's not really a very good place to clamp the ground clamp. So if we tack this up and out of the way, it'll give us a really good ground. So we got everything completely welded. We got the center section wrapped with the welding blanket, letting that cool slowly. Once that's done, we'll go back in, clean up all the welds, shoot it with a bit of spray paint, reassemble all the uh, front end components, and we're good to go. I had a slight clearance problem with uh, this side. I had to grind it quite a bit to get it to fit, and then it was gapped out too much, so I ended up cutting a couple little uh, pieces of eighth inch steel and just shoving them in there to weld. So on both sides, you got front and back. All right, so here's how the front came out. This is the back driver side. Kind of back of the passenger side and this side turned out the best, I think. So yeah, we got plenty of support right here over our front axle disconnect. So now while the paint's drying and everything, we're gonna get all of our front end components put back together. We're gonna start with the track bar bracket. Now we'll also put our steering stabilizer back on. 
All right, now we'll put the front axle disconnect back in. And reinstall the connector. Then the skid plate next. Then reinstall the brake line bracket. There we go. Completely unrelated to the truss, but while I have access here, I'm gonna be replacing my track bar bolts. And the reason is they're threaded all the way and over time it can uh, wear down the threads versus if we just get some 916s, grade eights uh, that are collared. It's just, just sort of a preventative thing. Um, I already did the, the lower one, so we're gonna pull off the upper one and put this grade eight bolt in there. On the driver's side, uh, we just have to plug the electric locker connection back in, like so. We gotta install the same little brake line bracket over here. Tighten down the shock. Now we don't have to worry about anything happening around the front axle disconnect. We are good to go, which is just, I really like the peace of mind. Keep in mind that depending on what other aftermarket components you're running, uh, your install may vary. Uh, and you might have to modify the truss in a couple spots. As long as you guys give yourself plenty of time, I just pretty much took the majority of a day just taking my time. You'll get through this no problem. I just use floor jacks, jack stands, hand tools. I mean, you do have to have a welder. Um, but that's nothing you can do about that, so. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That is the complete install of the Artec Industries Apex Front Truss. This is available for both uh, the JL and the Gladiator, and I believe they do JK trusses as well. Everything turned out really great. As you can see, I brought it outside. Sorry for the noise. So I could get the light and also get the forklift up so uh, we could get the suspension up full droop so we could get in there and kind of look at the finished product. I think it turned out great. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button while you're down there. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.